Unlike the Bleach PlayStation 2 games that I covered in my last video, this game was thankfully released in English. Bleach Soul Resurrection, or as it's known in Japan, Bleach Soul Ignition, was released in Japan on the 23rd of June 2011, and its English release was released in the United States on the 3rd of August 2011. This game features the epic 13th Bleach opening Rambu no Melody, which was sung by Sid as its intro song. However, the English localized version removed this song in favor of an instrumental song due to licensing issues. And speaking of the intro, it features an all original animation that is definitely worth checking out on its own. Now Bleach Soul Resurrection was developed by Rakjin, who were the guys behind Bleach Blade Battlers on the PlayStation 2. We spoke about this in the last gameplay video, and the general premise behind this game is to fight through a large number of enemies in a hack and slash or beat em up gameplay style, in order to earn what is known as soul points. Soul points are earned in game and can be used during the level up menu in order to learn new abilities and power up your characters. Now this is done through a grid based power up system and soul points are definitely rewarding and give the game an aspect of replayability. In terms of story, Bleach Soul Resurrection centers itself around the Hueco Mundo arc and the Fate Karakura Town arc and it sees us play through 14 missions which carry the story from Ichigo entering into Hueco Mundo all the way up until Aizen is defeated in the Soul Society. Now most of the missions follow a basic goal of working your way through the level, defeating small enemies, until you reach a boss that needs to be defeated in order to clear the level. Story mode is fully voiced in English and in Japanese by the respective voice actors from the anime. Now while the game does have some other modes besides story mode, like mission mode, soul attack mode and collection mode, for this video I'll be solely focusing on the story mode. Now there are 18 playable characters which include Ichigo, Ukiara, Byakuya, Aizen, Kimpachi and Uryu just to name a few, and in general before starting the game its reviews are standing at around a solid 6 out of 10, with a Metacritic score of 58. Bleach Soul Resurrection has been extensively reviewed, and the general consensus is, if you're a Bleach fan and you know the anime and the manga, it's worth checking out. Otherwise, there isn't much to keep your attention if you're not a fan. Now, as with most games that are based on an anime or manga, this is the general sentiment. There isn't much ready for casual gamers who aren't fans of the original source material. Let's see how the story mode adapts the source material, so story, play along and watch the main story unfold. But like I mentioned, there are 14 episodes here. It begins with Ichigo and company entering Hueco Mundo, and it takes us all the way until Aizen is defeated at the end of the Fate Karakura Town arc. Yeah, this is adapted all the way through these 14 playable missions within story mode. So we'll begin by playing with Ichigo and select normal difficulty. Before each mission, we do get a brief synopsis of the story here. But for people who are unaware of the bleat story and are coming into this as casual players, you're not going to know much because you're literally starting off right at the middle of the Aranka arc. So if you're a Bleach fan, by reading this intro you'll understand where we're picking up from and uh, you'll get a good feel of the story mode. But if you're new to the world of Bleach, you're not going to know much. This may as well be written in a different language, like you're not going to know who Orihime is, who the Espada are, who Ukiara is. I think I saw an IGN review and the guy had only seen like 50 episodes of the anime, so just about the Soul Society arc, and he had no idea what was going on. And that's because the events of this game are actually like episode 150 onwards. So yeah, you're not going to know what's going on if you've only watched 50 episodes of the anime. Bleach Soul Resurrection requires for you to have at least watched all of the anime of Bleach, or at least have gotten up to Ichigo defeating Aizen. So yeah, let's just uh, skip through this introduction. Yeah, we've got some basic abilities, Getsuka Tensho, Shiretsu Hogeki. So what we'll do is we'll play through the first mission and get a feel of the controls and all of the gauges that are on screen. So a pretty nice touch, we've got running commentary as we're playing. It's not just Ichigo speaking, you've got, obviously he's accompanied by Chad and Uryu here. I love that touch, you get some running commentary while you're playing by the actual voice actors from the show. So cutting down the tree, I think these green things are called soul points that I was speaking about. So we can use these to level up the characters at the end of every mission. So yeah, squares for a basic attack, uh, melee attack, press it multiple times to form a combo. Uh, triangles for a spirit attack that consumes a pressure gauge. Now the pressure gauge is below the health at the top there, so that's the three blue bars. Obviously every time we press triangle, unleashing a gets Katensho, it's consuming this pressure gauge, facing off against our first group of enemies. X to jump and square to attack, so we'll get rid of these with basic square attacks. It's a proper hack and slash beat em up game. After playing those PlayStation 2 games, I generally have a lot more appreciation for the graphics that are on display here. I mean, they're not the best graphics, but it's better than what we saw in those PlayStation 2 games, I'll tell you. Triangle, triangle in air, super move for circle, consumes spirit gauge. We'll try triangle for Getsuka Tensho, and we'll try circle. There you go. I think circle consumes all of the spirit gauge, so it's a bit more of a powerful special attack. What you'll see on the left hand side of the screen is telling us to press L2, that's the ignition gauge. So, 
With the ignition gauge, it triples our character's attack. So the ignition gauge gets filled by dealing damage to the enemies. And once it is activated, it'll slowly drain away, as you can see. And if we press L2 again while in the ignition gauge, it'll uh, deplete the rest of it and unleash a character's most powerful attack. So that's the ignition attack. There is an easy way to get through all of the levels in this game. So you can dash with R2. We can actually dash to the end of the mission by holding onto R2, skip all of those hollows and get to the boss. That green bar means that you can't progress until you defeat that enemy on screen. So you're gonna have to defeat this hollow slug tortoise. Yeah, as we're progressing through the story, we've got uh, Nell speaking to us. So we can press L1 to lock onto the character. So we're locked onto slug tortoise now. Once the uh, hollow stands upright, then that's his weakness and you can just really take it out very easily. It's a very easy game, to be honest. Uh, there's not much to it. But at the same time, it's very enjoyable. Definitely worth checking out if you're a Bleach fan. I have a lot of praise for this game. So you can pick up these different things that heal up the HP and continue fighting the little hollows, pick up your soul points. And I'll show you how we level up the characters once we clear this mission. So we'll get out of here now. And we're going to be facing off against the main boss of this level, which is going to be a group of Menos Grande. So the only actual control that I've not spoken about is to block so we block with r1 if we block and we hold the directional button then we can actually perform shampo if we're a uh, shinigami if you're playing us at a wrong car it's going to be sonido so we'll lock onto the menos start with triangle wow now we're going to get a battle between three menos grande all at once we'll just target them one at a time okay thankfully our ignition gauge is full so we can uh, use that so we'll just do an ignition attack on the first menos take it out if you're following the dialogue in the bottom, then you'll tell that the story is progressing. Nels joined the party, Ichigo, Uryu, and Chad are conversing. Okay, we're on the last Menos now. This, honestly, is really fun. I love flying through the air. This is everything that all Bleach fans have wanted from a console-based Bleach game. There's so much freedom here. Just fly through the air, face off against a giant enemy like a Menos Grande. I mean, it's not the most, like, in-depth game, but it's still enjoyable. First level, we've got a C rank. We've got 323 soul points. So we've unlocked Uryu as a character. Episode 2 has been unlocked. Yeah, let's see the level up screen. So the level up system is uh, in a spherical kind of grid. So we'll level up Ichigo for now. So use soul points obtained during battle to upgrade your character at the level up screen. Every time a panel is unlocked, your character's level goes up by one. Keep unlocking panels to upgrade your character. Let's see what we can unlock. So we can have an attack boost, defense boost, health boost. So we can greatly increase our health or we can moderately increase it. I always go for vitality increases. We'll start with that. We've got 123 points left. Can't really use it for much else. We've got to play as Ichigo. We've unlocked Uryu. I think the second episode, we're going to see us playing as Uryu. And the third episode, we're going to play as Ichigo. Just for variety's sake, we're going to play as a Quincy and see how Uryu plays in the game. See if he's any similar to Ichigo. These short summaries are very painful to read. I feel sorry just for any of the non-Bleach fans who are reading these. One after the other, you're being bombarded with these new words. You have no idea what any of them are. You don't know what the characters are called. You're definitely going to have to be a fan of the series to play this game. Uryu's actually got his own unique set of skills here. Controls are gonna be the same. So we're playing with a character who specializes in long distance combat. Okay, cool. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Obviously, we're gonna be facing off against uh, hollows that are flying in the sky. I love the variety, man. This is really cool. That is really fun. So Uryu can dash as well. Super move consumes Gintos. Instead of spiritual pressure, Gintos will refill over time. That is awesome. That is really fun. Wow, okay. Uryu has his own unique way of dodging, spinning his Quincy blade. Skip our way all the way to the end of this. Okay, when it's green, then we're gonna have to defeat all the enemies on screen. I can see how this will get repetitive and boring. I mean, we're doing the same thing over and over again. When you've had so little of something, you'll accept anything. I mean, I'll take this for what it is. It's fun. Waco Mundo's atmosphere has a high concentration of reishi. This dialogue, man. I've said it before, it's really nice hearing him talk. I wanna fill up the ignition gauge. I wanna see Uryu's ignition attack, to be honest with you. We've healed up our health. This game is very easy, so if you're expecting a challenge, you know, look elsewhere. I like the way that they've implemented would use abilities into this game. The well, last one, should we use the ignition attack? This is gonna be an overkill. Oh, wow. Rush our way through to the end of the mission. Who'd use about to deal some business here? About to throw it down. Episode 3 is Ichigo vs. Grimjow, so I wonder how faithfully they are adapting everything. This game's probably just a lot of filler and fodder fights until you get around to one of the key battles of the story. Ichigo facing off against low level Arankars and Hollows until Grimjow turns up. So when it comes to points like this within the mission, you're just gonna have to clear all of the enemies on the stage until you can get through to the next portion. Ignition attack. This is a really OP attack. 
Wow. That's the mission cleared. We didn't really have a proper boss. That took five minutes to clear. Rank C again. Got about 300 soul points. I'm probably ranking C because I'm just skipping through most of it. So with each character you play through, they earn the soul points for their respective character. So it's not just one big pool of soul points. Mission three. So we've got blood battle. So I'm guessing we're going to face off against Grimjow here. Let's have a look. Normal mode. Quarto Espada. The Sexta Espada Grimjow Jagajag secretly steals Orihime away to have her heal Ichigo's wounds. This game is 10 years old now. So much time has passed. That's pretty cool. Uh, Orihime and Nell speaking to Ichigo at the bottom. Let's just earn a bit of soul points. Let's just not completely skip through the entire level. I'm not going to be able to get out of here until I defeat these guys, so... Cruel Wings, honestly. They're very creative, aren't they? With these different hollows that they've conjured up for this game. Wow. I wonder what kind of abilities you can unlock within level up mode. Okay. So even when you dash, you can actually hit the enemies. It seems to be like the same, like two character models, like copied and pasted over and over again. Pretty fun. If you want to kill, if you want to kill some time and play as Ichigo and the others, then this is definitely your game. Our health gauge has increased after that level up, so it's nice to see. This is just mindless fun, to be honest with you. There's nothing really too deep or to think into. If you're a fan of the series, you're going to love this. I'm enjoying this game. It's not a AAA title, but it's good enough. And there's so few Bleach games out there that whatever you've got, it's hard not to appreciate it. So I've got the ignition gauge ready for when we face off against Grimjack. Fishbone D, wow, okay. Probably not gonna be that much of a threat to be honest. Let's take him out there. Oh, three of them. I'm not really utilizing the block at all. Got half a health. Can I pick up something? Does this have a health inside it? Yes, okay. Let's go face off against Grimjo. Now this is what I'm talking about. Now this I wanted to see some cutscenes. Character models are not too bad, you know. Oh, it would have been amazing if they started this off in the Aranka invasion. There's no character model for Grimjow's base form, so we're starting off with just facing off against Grimjow and his uh, Resurrection. Get his target in first, okay. I'm just gonna go straight up with the ignition attack. Ooh. I think I've got a proper chance against him now, okay. Let's uh, deal with him. Oh, it would have been cool if you can summon the Hollow Mask in game. Oh, God damn it, my pressure gauge isn't full. very easy to just not let them do anything. But this game is very forgiving. Even if you're losing, there's always like a health boost nearby that'll uh, help you out. Ooh. Oh my god. The thing is, once they start their special attack, you can't dodge it. Oh my god, please, please, I need a health. Okay, he's done. Grimjow, you're finished. I'm, I'm tired of playing games with this guy. This battle against Grimjow is living up to the hype, man. Okay, I'm just gonna finish him off now. Ignition attack. Boom. That was uh, pretty tense. I know a lot of you guys will probably have a lot of fun with this. Find it a lot more easier than I did, but I'm not the best at games. 476 soul points. Okay, so we get to play as Kimpachi in episode 4. We get to play as Rukia in episode 5. Oh my god, is this song here? Is this music? James Hansen's outro song. I think it is. Of course, you guys have this fine David Hansen. Peace out. Big shout out to James Hansen here. Kimpachi's too cool, man. This must be a dream come true, man. Kimpachi fans finally getting to play as Kimpachi. Oh, I hope Neutra is in the game. It would be cool to see Kimpachi facing off against Neutra. Kimpachi's not taking any prisoners. So like I said, there's not much to say. It's a lot of mindless button bashing. Don't expect the most insightful commentary here. How do I get through this? I have to... Okay. I'm gonna need this. I'm gonna need... Hopefully a health. Yep. Okay, just gotta remember to dodge and attack when it's appropriate. Oh... These attacks, man, they've done a nice job of implementing super and special attacks for the respective characters. It matches their personalities, I'll give you that. Nitro is looking like a monster with all those blades. This is where Kimpachi learns to fight with two hands. Oh my god. Kendo, there you go. That was a very short mission. Three minutes, we completed that in. Great effort, but nothing but a C, though. Mission five. Aroniero Aruru Riari. Rookie's model looking a bit derpy. Let's get to the meat and potatoes of this uh, mission. I'm looking forward to Ichigo's fight against Dukiara, to be honest. I want to see how they've done that. Aronka Sotano. Surprised there was no sequel to this game. Definitely had potential. I mean, there are a lot of ideas here that they could have built up upon. Would it be nice if they started the story mode from the very beginning of the series? So interested to see who the final boss is in this stage. There you go, the Exekias. Oh my god. How many of them are there? My actual fingers going numb because I'm bashing square that much. Okay, let's just do an ignition attack. Let's see. 
We're getting through this game in record time. These guys are like easy enemies just to build up the ignition gauge. Once we activate it, we'll just focus on the main target then. Okay. For God's sake, his target box is all the way up there. It's pretty annoying to fly all the way up. Okay, okay, almost there. You guys have played with quite a few characters now, so just beaten a stage with Rukia. Finally, we're at the Ukiara fight. Let's level up Ichigo. We'll do an attack level up. Yeah, we'll do another attack power up here. Yeah, that's fine. This is a pretty cool transition where they have this like shadowy silhouetted Ichigo who just uh, transitions into the game. There you go. That is pretty nice. It's a smooth transition. So head for the upper floors in the tower. We're going to do the classic skip here. We're going to just skip through all this. They're going to make us work to fight Ukiara, aren't they? I have to admit, the character who have enjoyed playing with the most is Ichigo. What a variety of villains here. You've got these uh, very strange looking Oranka. Okay, these guys need a few hits to be taken down. Oh god damn it, it's so annoying. You know these like odd few enemies are just stuck in the air? Camera can be a bit janky sometimes. I'm just rushing through the story. I just kind of want to see all the boss battles. Hence why we've not got that many soul points and hence why Ichigo's not completely powered up. Reptile Bone. <laughs> That's a very original name. Okay. Let's do an ignition attack. Reptile Bone. What a what a sausage fest. Okay, I can tell the boss battle's coming up, so we've got two of these. We skipped quite a bit just to get to this point. I mean, it's not uh, fully explained, but uh, we're here. We didn't even get to see base one Mukiara. This game is like, no, let, let's just forget all of the build up. Let's just go to the main bit. Let's just show all the resurrection. This is Ukiara's second resurrection. We didn't even get the base form or the first resurrection. Let's just try and beat this guy in record time. Johnny Young Bosch was in prime form when he was doing this. Oh god. I think he's just getting ready to do his special attack. Yeah, there you go. Lanza del Embargo. Oh my god. Oh, okay, please, please. I hope this is a health. Yeah, it's a health. Even me, who's not good at games, is uh, flying through this. Okay, so that was one encounter with Ukiara, so we're probably going to face off against him again. Hollow fight Ichigo. Oh, yes. Okay, episode 7, the Vasta Lode fight against uh, Ukiara. Let's go. I could have, like, put this in a cutscene. It would have been nice if we had a cutscene of this. I will give it this, though. They've uh, really fleshed out the abilities of each of the characters in here. This is a PlayStation 3 game. It looks like a mix between PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3. It's not completely at PlayStation 3 level. They definitely could have done a better job with the graphics. In the animations, to be honest, that cutscene was just terrible. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. So that took three pressure bars there. Okay, ignition. Let's just quickly get a health. Okay, now let's deal with Ukiara. Straight up. Let's just go. Yo, this is wild. That was an epic fight. I had a lot of fun with that fight. We've unlocked Siphon. I'm guessing we've got the fake Karakura Town battles now. Hitsugaya with Harry Bell, Siphon with Barragan, and Shunsui and Stark. Let's have a look at Hitsugaya's fight. Okay, we're fighting in the air. Okay, this is uh, a welcome change. I was under the impression that uh, this game was focused heavily within Hueco Mundo, but I'm glad that uh, we've got some fake Karakura Town portion in here. After this, we're going to pretty much almost be done with the game. <laughs> I feel like I'm playing as a Devil Jin here from Tekken. I keep saying this, it's just a really fun like hack and slash beat em up game. Not much else to really gather from here. I mean, it can be frustrating. I mean, these uh, characters can get really boring and repetitive to fight over and over again. There's not much variety in these small villains as well. The main highlight of Elite Soul Resurrection is definitely the boss battles. I mean, having so much fun with each of the different boss encounters. Those first few levels where we were playing as Ichigo and we fought against those Menos, they were pretty good just to learn the controls. I'm looking forward to facing off against the other Espada. Harry Bell, Barragan, and Stark. Let's just skip through this. Oh, let's uh, check out uh, Hitsugaya's ignition attack. Oh, yo. That's a nice touch. Yeah, I'm impressed with that. That is good. Just so disappointing. It's been 10 years we've not had a console Bleach game. The anime ended in 2012. This game came out in 2011. Manga ended in 2016. We could have, we could have had another game. With the anime coming back, I'm hoping that we get another Bleach game. We've got Harry Bell. 
Hyrubel's uh, character model looks on point, so does Hitsugaya's. Thank god this game was localized, man. Again, Harry Bell's in a resurrection. They wasted no time. We didn't get to see a base form. All killer, no filler. Hits Guy versus Harry Bell is uh, one of my favorite fights within the fake character Town arc. And it came to, honestly, such an like unexpected, abrupt ending when Aizen just takes out Harry Bell. Done. It's not that it's difficult, it's just at some points these fights can get very tedious. So 171 soul points. I could tell they were trying to do some stuff with this, especially with these new characters. You're playing with them, you know, only once. I don't think we're gonna play with, you know, Rukio or Uryu again. Let's uh, see God of Huikamundo. Let's get through this stage quickly. Okay, move through Karakura Town. Let's just do the usual, skip through all this. So I used to watch Bleach in the dub way back in the day, but uh, at some point it swapped over to the sub and I never really uh, looked back. God, okay. Let's just get through and fight Baragon already. Let's just do the ignition attack. Okay, wow. Oh, the aim is sometimes really annoying and the camera angle goes all funny. Oh, okay. Yo, that is cool. Two hit kill. When you see these two before moving on, then you know the boss battle's next. We've got a hopefully sold ignition yet. Yeah, let's go. This video is literally one whole video full of boss battles. In the space of one video, we've taken out nearly all of the Sparta, and we're gonna we're gonna hopefully take out Aizen as well. If we can just stay away when he's using Respira and we're just attacking long range from here, I think this fight's gonna be over very quickly. Okay, careful, careful. Okay, back off now. Almost there, almost there. Done. We're just wiping the floor with all of these Sparta. Lone Wolf 10, episode 10, we've got 11, 12, 13, 14 after this. Yo, shout out to James Hansen's outro. This is just the song I need to clear through the stage. You've just been Hansen, boys. Peace out. I think uh, Shunsui knows all about Hansening people. Yo, Shunsui's health bar, man, look at it. You can tell he's one of the strongest. Yo, he's making quick work out of everything here. You know you got a powerful character and they've just designed the gameplay around him to be just so satisfying. Shunsui's not taking any hits, man. Come on, let's find Stark. I swear to God, have they dragged out this mission? These guys are so annoying. Oh, for God's sake, get out of here. Bloody janky ass animation, man. <laughs> what a terrible camera angle. See, it's so annoying. You have to jump because he's flying so high in the air. You have to constantly jump and attack this guy. Health's not doing too bad. Okay, I got the ignition boost, got the health, and we're ready now. Obviously, he's gonna be in his resurrection form. <laughs> that looks derpy. It just looks like a PlayStation 2 game. Let's just go straight in with the ignition boost. Yo, Stark's gonna feel very lonely after this. Okay, that was a pretty cool ignition attack. Yo, Shunsui is too OP, man. That is awesome. Shunsui is so good. God, Shunsui is voice actor, man. <laughs> Just wasn't in the mood. Just wasn't in the mood. Okay. Yo, I'm, I've taken that head on. That is a that is a cool animation. Yo, Shunsui has got some crazy regenerative ability, man. That was too easy, man. They've, they've made Shunsui too powerful in this. 273 soul points. That was really, really easily done. Okay, Byakuya and Yami. Then after this, we've got a level with Yoriichi. Let's quickly get through this one. At this point, I'm ready for Ichigo versus Aizen. I hate these green barriers. The Vulcan Gigant. Oh, God. Gonna just have to get a health after that. A <laughs> bloody explosion. Yo. A definite attempt is being made here to tell the story, but uh don't know how successful they are at it. Byakuya versus Yami. Wonder if Kimpachi's gonna join us. Again, character models are really good. Okay, this is a bit more of a trickier fight, but I think we've got it, so do a long range attack with triangle until his head dips. Oh, 
Okay, he's not too bad. I think you just gotta figure out how to fight him. I think I can finish him off now, surely. This guy was a pain. You gotta just figure out the tactic and just uh, roll with it. Okay, thank god he's done. Full sheet of C's. And the only one that uh, we gotta be on was the heart. So, Yorichi's level, divine power. Okay, Yorichi's got an interesting fight style. They've tried to make it an experience, but it's very repetitive and boring, to be honest with you. I love the fact that, you know, there are several characters, each of them have a variety of abilities and attacks. There's only so much you can do in this kind of, like, gameplay style, to be honest. Like, I'm already ready to see the ending. Like, I'm, I'm already done with this game. God, you know what, I'd love it if there was uh, like a 3 versus 1 boss battle. Urahara and Ishin team up. We're facing off against Aizen one on one. I never liked this form of Aizen, in his cocoon form. Oh, she's got the same move as uh, Siphon. That's, that Anken ability comes in pretty handy to be honest, it does quite a bit of damage. Okay. Come on, Yorichi, you've got this. Okay, that's cool. Okay, time to end this. Yo, point blank range. That was amazing. Thought there was like two stages to that boss fight then. We've got episode 13 and then we're finishing off with episode 14. Okay, we're on the penultimate stage. Ginichimaru Awakening. Oh my god, I think they were rushing the game at this point. Gin's model looks absolutely horrifying. That is so janky. So it's going straight in with the boss battle here. They didn't even create like a full level for this. After this one, the final mission. So we're almost done. I think Gin's not going to have a chance. I'm not even going to give him an opportunity to like even strike back. Oh god, he's pesky man. You got to just get him and just trap him. If I can just get the ignition gauge and just take this guy out. Okay, that. So this is how Bleach Resurrection is going to go into its final mission. Look at Ichigo there. This is getting so terrible now. You know what? The game's supposed to like save the best for last. I feel like the worst moments are in the end. Such a lazy game. It started off so good. Towards the end, it's just, honestly, I feel like they were rushing to get it finished. S rank, episode 14, to protect. So this is the final mission of the game, guys. Yeah, that's the whole character roster, I think. 17, we've got one more character to unlock. So this is the final mission of Bleach Soul Resurrection, playing as Danga Ichigo. This is cool. Ichigo's final has an ignition attack, but is not available for use in this episode. What? Frog bone, fish bone, reptile bone, frog bone. Head towards the final battle. Optional, we're gonna skip. They're doing everything that they can to delay this final fight. Making quick work out of all this. Okay, they're done. I'm so done with this game. Let me just face off against Aizen and call it. We've got uh, Butterfly Aizen. Okay, this guy is really frustrating. Yo, he's dodging everything. How's he? Nani? Nani? Come on, come on. Okay. Yo. Done, finally. Yo, it's a shame, man, Ichigo didn't have a ignition attack at the end. So they're just gonna do it as a cutscene. We got here in a very haphazard manner, but we're here. All the way from the beginning of the Hueco Mundo arc to Ichigo's Mugetsu. That's it. That's the end of the story mode of Bleach Soul Resurrection. <laughs> God. <laughs> that character model. I mean, to be fair to the creators, I mean, they've done a good job with the character models so far. It's just sometimes they have their moments where they look deppy. <laughs> That's a uh, bleach soul resurrection for you. In terms of the game, it is far more fleshed out than the PlayStation 2 games that we had. Thankfully, the combat system is very fun and it is enjoyable, uh, but it can get repetitive and boring very quickly. Now, the story mode has a short play time. I completed this personally within two and a half hours, but I was rushing through it. So if you were fighting each of the small villains, it can take you up 
to like four to five hours to complete the story mode, but it does leave you wanting more. Each of the main bosses, we fought against the Espada after they were in their Resurrection. There was no build up. Like we didn't see any of their base forms. Ukiaro we fought in his second Resurrection form. Like where was the first? Like where was the base form battle? Now, if you're itching to re-experience the Bleach story in a fun and new way, then sadly, this isn't the best way to do so. So Bleach Soul Resurrection story mode haphazardly adapts the source material and it shoehorns it into this hack and slash gameplay. Now, with all of this said, Bleach Soul Resurrection is definitely still worth checking out if you're a Bleach fan. And at the moment, it is honestly the best console based Bleach game that I have ever played. Definitely go check this one out. I want to know your thoughts. Have you played Bleach Soul Resurrection in the past? What are your experiences of it? Are you going to check the game out after watching this video? I'd love to read your thoughts in the comments down below. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any other recommendations for Bleach gameplay videos, then leave a comment and let me know. There are still quite a few Bleach games that we can play through, like the Nintendo DS titles, PSP titles. I know the GameCube and the Nintendo, we have some Bleach games. If you're interested in seeing more gameplay videos like this one, then definitely let me know in the comments down below. And I can't wait to see you in my next Bleach video. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, then please consider supporting my channel on Patreon. I have multiple tiers with the rewards including access to an exclusive Discord server, video scripts, as well as being the first to know about unreleased upcoming videos. Thank you for your time and whatever you choose to contribute, I will appreciate and it will mean a lot to me.